Okay, boys and girls, the last time we had class, I told you the next time we meet, we're going to be learning all about Dragon Canoe and Nancy Ward. Of course, I had no idea that the next time we met would be like this, but I think we can pull this off, and I didn't want to leave you hanging in history suspense. So, the last time we had class, we learned all about those first settlers moving into East Tennessee, coming through the Cumberland Gap. When they first got here, they encountered the Cherokee and they lived peacefully among them. Well, as time goes by and more settlers come, there's a need for more land. So the settlers meet with our favorite chief, who we are now gonna call Little Carpenter instead of Atakulakaliki, because it's easier to say Little Carpenter and that was his English name. So Little Carpenter signed a lease agreement with those first settlers and uh, they formed the Watauga Settlements. Now I remember us talking in class and we didn't have a real good feeling about this lease agreement. Because if there's anything we've learned in history, people are never satisfied. They always want more and more. Sure enough, more and more people start coming into the area and now they're leapfrogging through the wilderness and they're scattered out everywhere. Then here comes the next big thing. Richard Henderson was a land speculator. He comes into the area he enters into an agreement with Little Carpenter and he purchases 20 million acres of land and here's what he's gonna do with it. He's gonna turn around and sell it to settlers. That's what he begins to do. Now, when this agreement was made, Little Carpenter's son, Dragging Canoe, was there. He is furious with his father. He stands up in the meeting and he said, entire nations of our people have melted away like balls of snow in the sun. And you old people, maybe you don't need this land to hunt on, but we do. We're young and I have my warriors and we will get our land. And those words from Dragon Canoe were a hint at what was to come. So the people keep coming and they're coming. And around this time, the American Revolution is really up and going. And those British need help fighting these colonists. So who do they go to? The Cherokee, specifically Dragon Canoe, who is not happy anyway about the way things are going. So they promise the Cherokee supplies to help fight this war. And they tell the Cherokee, we'll just get those settlers out of your hunting grounds and you can have your land back. But let's be fair. We'll give them a little bit of time to get out first, and then if they don't, it's war. So, Dragon Canoe does what he's asked. He's gonna wait and not fight until the settlers have time to evict. Well, they're not going anywhere because they like this new land. And anyway, they've built forts how dangerous could it possibly be? Enters our Cherokee beloved woman, Nancy Ward. Now, Nancy Ward is her English name, but I'll tell you a little bit about her. Uh, there had been some fighting between the Cherokee and Creek over hunting grounds, and Nancy was married to a Cherokee warrior. She joined him in that battle. Well, he dies. She picks up his gun and she continues fighting, singing Cherokee war songs as she does. Well, this earns her the great respect of the Cherokee people and following that, they make her a beloved woman of war. But Nancy wasn't all about war. She wanted peace. So Nancy goes and warns these Watauga settlers, hey, there's getting ready to be trouble from dragging canoe. Now, there was trouble. We call that time the Cherokee Wars. They were upset at this influx of settlers into their hunting grounds, and they weren't gonna settle it peacefully like their elders did. Now, I want to read to you a firsthand primary source account 
of a lady who was in Watuga Fort when Dragon Canoe and his company come to attack. Now, you're not going to believe this, but Catherine, Cheryl, left the fort to go milk a cow. Now, I don't know about you. I would have been staying in that fort whether the cow needed to be milked or not. Anyway, she's outside the fort to milk the cows when the Indians come. Here come the Cherokee. So she runs for the fort gate, tries the door, it's locked. So now she's got to climb over. Here's what she said. The bullets and arrows came like a storm. It was now leap or die, for I would not live a captive of the Cherokee. Just then, the arms of John Severe reach over the fort wall, and they help her climb to safety. Now, we'll learn a little bit about John Severe later, because when Tennessee does become a state, he will be the first governor, and I bet you can guess who his wife will be. So there you have it, our history lesson for today. And the next time we meet, we're going to be learning about those fighting Scot-Irish of the Appalachian, the over-mountain men who helped George Washington win the American Revolution.